Elon Musk throwing out the, the multi-million dollar Twitter brand in order to create a so-called super app called X. Mark Zuckerberg did something similar, abandoning the Facebook brand in exchange for Meta. But which is better for shareholders? Here to discuss is CNBC contributor Steve Odlin, president and CEO of the Conference Board. He's also former CEO of Office Depot and AutoZone. Steve, welcome. Good to have you with us. Maybe we're oversimplifying here between the founder uh, innovator and the and the seasoned operator, the corporate the, the, the corporate exec. I'd I'd put Larry Culp of GE also into into that group of the seasoned operator operator types. Talk us through this. Are we on to something here? And which ones seem to have the better success at running companies profitably and good for shareholders? Yeah. Well, there there are multiple issues here. First of all. You know, this whole magic of a 65-year-old retirement age, that's an artifact of the 1930s and Social Security when it was set that way. And it's kind of been, you know, used as the retirement age, and yet people are living 20 years longer. So this this notion of a 65-year-old, you know, retirement, CEOs out, I think is, is completely being rethought, particularly with people very energetic into their 70s, board members in their 70s. We have a president who's 80. Uh, Warren Buffett's 93. I mean, you know, th is there a, a magical number? No. Now, the other issue is, you know, do these people uh, have to be innovators or what, what is the juxtaposition of innovation versus running a company? Well, of course, you want to have innovative ideas, innovative leadership and so forth. But we're talking about inventors when we're talking about Musk and Zuckerberg. Why on earth is Elon Musk a CEO of a public company? I mean, just listen to the things that he's invented. Of course, we know Tesla, SpaceX, uh, Hyperloop, OpenAI. He was one of the founders of OpenAI, Neuralink, Zip2, SolarCity, Electric Jet, online phone calls, Blaststar, Boring Company, which is not very boring. All of these things he's invented and more in the pipeline. Why is he wasting his time day to day? Why is a board of directors having him Changed the logo uh, of you know, <laughs> you know at Twitter. Why isn't he inventing? There should be a whole waiting room of CEOs where Elon Musk invents something, hands it off to a CEO to launch and run. I, I think it's a highest and best use situation, and I think this is what boards of directors need to think about. It, you know, the true innovation inventors versus people who can run the company, take it to the next level, deal with shareholders and other stakeholders day to day. Yeah, not to minimize uh, Musk. I mean, he's not the CEO of Twitter anymore. Linda Yaccarino is, but 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 he is still calling the signals. I mean, he's he, he's the head, I guess he's the head coach and she's the offensive coordinator. Chief technology officer. Yeah. Yeah. He's chief technology officer. So as I think back about about founders, sometimes founders and as you said sort of intimate there, you said it. I mean, it's like Musk has too many ideas to be <laughs> messing around as CEO. Yeah, M Musk is a national hero. I mean, I, literally, he's a treasure. I mean, it, 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 he may not be CEO of, of, um, of Twitter, but he's calling the shots. But he was running Tesla day to day and, you know, tied up with, with the regulators and all this stuff. That's not what you want him to do. So mm -hmm. I think boards mm -hmm. of directors need to think seriously about, you know, the kind of person who can launch these ideas, launch a company, the highest and best use, and then the professional leadership who can carry it on and, and, and really take it to the next level. But I think this whole uh, concept around age needs to be completely mm -hmm. rethought, tossed out the window as well. You know, with, that's been done largely on boards of directors where, you know, people are staying longer. You know, some people are ready to retire at 55. Some people are not until, you know, much, much later. And so I don't think you can create this artificial situation. Now, founders is a whole different kettle of fish where you've got people who come in and take it to a certain level, hand it off, and, you know, it gets fumbled. And then, they, you know, Howard Schultz is an example of this, where they brought him back a couple of times uh, to run Starbucks and fix the situation. But ultimately, you have to groove a, a successor who can carry it forward and take it to the next level. That's what shareholders want. They want predictability and consistency. Yeah, that bench is so important. And, and there are so many companies that are fabled for their executives that, that are groomed and, and um, rise through the ranks, to your point. Uh, I do want to shift gears a little bit here because it is helping to propel the market higher today. It's the consumer confidence reading that we got 
this morning. It was really a Goldilocks reading, the fact that we saw we saw it come in above uh, expectations, best level since July 2021. And we are seeing those inflation expectations continue to, to move lower, too. I guess just walk us through the report and and whether it feeds into the soft landing thesis that, that the market has uh, really seized upon. Yeah, so the, the Conference Board's Consumer Confidence Index came out a few hours ago, and it was a great report. Consumers are more confident than they have been in years. And that's driven by their own view of their jobs. Their jobs are stable. They're feeling comfortable. They're feeling like it. You know, they're going to be able to keep their jobs. They're not eliminating jobs in this economy. Their wages are higher. Um, and, you know, all of this is feeding into it. Inflation has come down, and it's predominantly gas that is driving that food uh, inflation rates have come down uh, to some extent as well. And that, that's really important for the lower earning folks where food and gas are a higher proportion of their expenditures. So, you know, you ask, we ask consumers this time, you know, do you expect there to be a recession? And fewer and fewer consumers are saying that they, that they in fact, expect a recession. So maybe there will be this soft land, the so-called soft landing. You know, we're, we're down to about three or four percent uh, inflation levels. The Fed's trying to hit two. We think they're going to go up again this week. They probably will go up one more mm -hmm. time, 25 basis points. But, you know, if they can do that without driving uh, a negative GDP number, that will be a soft landing and it will be easier on uh, employees. It sure will be. It will also be somewhat of a rare feat. So we'll yes. see if they can do it. Steve Odlin, CEO of the Conference Board, thanks for joining us.